Hi everyone, this is Olivia. Welcome back to my channel. How are you all? In the video today, I am very excited to show you how I do the waist background. And I will do the similar background with this page. Um, I got a lot of requests to do a video on how to do the waist on this page from the Lost Ocean uh, a long time ago, even before I start my channel. So I'm very happy that I can finally show you. It is quite easy. It's not hard, but you do need a little bit imagination and you know it's, I wouldn't say drawing skill, but uh, a little bit of your handwork. You know, like so you can draw these little waves. So the book I use is a Lost Ocean from Johanna Pass first. I will take off the cover because I don't want it to get dirty when I do the background. And I will also use a big piece of paper. Any paper will do. I just gonna put it underneath this page. So when I rub the pastel, it won't go on the table. So I will use soft pastel for our background. If you don't know what soft pastel is, um, they are like have a chalky texture and you they are quite cheap rice uh, unless you get a really expensive brand but uh, this is a Korean brand Mungyo Pastel and this is like a their student brand um, they have the other set that is for professional it's quite cheap I will link put a link down in the description for you so you can find where you can buy so this out is more but you know you don't need a lot to uh, do a background so this lasts me for ages and they're very pretty i think they're quite good price for 64 colors so i'm gonna use um, those today and i will also uh, it's also soft pastel but i will use a little bit of uh, from this brand because there's a um, the color that i like and they're quite thick this one is cheap. Um, I just get from my local ad store in Australia. Um, they're quite cheap student brand. It's not expensive. And they're bigger than the Mungio. So I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use uh, the sand color for my sand background. And there is an, also another brand that I saw on AliExpress. I haven't used it yet, but. Um, this one is also cheap as well so maybe I will use this one in another video so I can review this for you guys to see how good it is they pack it quite well to see like how many layers and this one they come with um, 48 color this one is a Marie Marie brand this one is the same with the watercolor cheap, uh, I use, they're quite cheap, but uh, they're pretty good for starter. So they, they're small as well, but they're a bit longer than the Mungio pasto. So um, I think one day I will use this to see how it performs. I like chalk pasta because they're really quick to use to finish a background. And you also need your pencil. So these are the color that I'm gonna use to add in a little bit more depth later. So I'm gonna use a polychromo here. So we have light petal blue, petal blue, in in dendron blue, light petal green, and I will use a polychromo. But you can find very similar color for the prisma color if you're gonna use prisma color. Okay, so you gonna have your 919, I think it's non photo blue. 903 is tree blue, I think. 901 is Russian blue or indigo blue. Ah, this one is indigo blue. And 910 is a uh, true green, I think. Yeah, because this color I use uh, quite often, so I kind of remember the name. 
So I will just put it here so you can, you know, pause the video and get out your pencil. This one, we don't need a lot of them. We're just gonna use it to add more color after we do the pastel, okay? And before you do this on your background, I really, really recommend you to try like follow my video but try it on a smaller piece of paper or um, on a book that you don't really care that it get ruined because you need to draw in the white flies and I think if you practice it before you draw it in you know your final piece you will get much better result so what I do when I do my exercise before I do any in my final piece is I have this little box of John Hanna Basswell's calendar. I know it's 2017. I never finished it, but my husband got it for me um, because it's quite cheap and I use it to, you know, just test out my color palette and, you know, just have fun with it. I have hips because it's have like 360 pages and it has all sorts of from her previous book. I think this one doesn't have the magical jungle because it's before the magical jungle come out but if you get the similar one from um, you know the 2018 for example i think it or maybe get the one for this year 2019 it maybe have all her um recent book and so you can try out the colors in this you don't have to buy this to color every day i don't think you need to it would just put pressure on you for some reason like me I don't like to pressure that I have to finish once a day so this is what I just practiced earlier so I can um, you know do this wise slide this is just my tips but it will really good for you to have some sort of book that you don't really care to get ruined or or something that you can practice on coloring skill without worrying that you're gonna ruin the book because I know a lot of people scared that they're gonna ruin their new book or you know and it's not a good feeling to think about it isn't it so let's get started I talk too much already now I will do the white come from this side because I will use one of these crafting knife so I can scratch off the color from the soft pastel and I also use uh, these are called makeup pad or makeup removal pad you can get them very very cheap from Kmart or Walmart or anywhere else pretty much they're really cheap so you don't have to use exactly the same color as I do but I will swatch out the color for you so you can uh, have an idea of what sort of color I will use in this background. So I will use the uh, sort of a sand color. So let's do all this paper. See, I already got it out. So what you do, you scratch off a little bit of pencil. I'll just swatch them out for you so you can see. Uh, this is not our final piece and you get your pad and you go in sort of circle and just um, rub it down like so so that is a wood color that we're going to use for this one uh, if you have the bigger set you will find they have a little bit of darker color uh, which is fine you can use that one as well you know, just to darken it up it's more like a brownish color if you have a brow you can mix in a little bit of yellow you see it's brighten up the brow and you will have sort of sandy color so we're gonna use this sort of color and for the water itself so the camera turned off while I was uh, swatching this color out for you. So I just use kind of a bluish purple pastel. It's really really nice. And I will also use another one that is a lot darker, darker shade of blue. And 
when you look in the camera it's quite light but like that we will kind of layer them on top of each other and it will make it a lot darker plus we will use pencil to color in to darken up details as well so don't worry about it look a little bit light now okay and I'm gonna use a uh, kind of bluish green Turn it out for you to see this one is a green that we're gonna use okay a very pretty green so these are all the pastel color that we're gonna use for our background so you just test them out test all your pastel out and just figure out what color you want to use okay you don't have to use exactly the same with what I used though you can just use any blue or any brown that you have so I don't mind for the pastel is sort of on top of this shell that I already done but if you um, worry about the pastel will cover some of your pencil work I recommend you go over the one that you already color with a blender pencil any blender will do this only from the dough and yeah it's look really sad this one when you use it it will act as a uh, protection layer and uh, so it won't get your soft pastel on top of it do a light layer on top of this cell and it will prevent the pasta will rub on top of them but I don't really mind I, I don't really care at all um, so I probably don't don't really need to use this okay so when you get ready you can start with me and I'm gonna do the water on this side so I'm gonna do rub my sand color on this side but do have half or you can do more water if you want to uh, do more sand if you want to doesn't need to be even okay so I think that's enough now use my makeup hair I just gently rub it in And if you want more darker, you just go in with like more layer, wrap more layer down. Now I use a little bit of yellow and I will also just scrape it down. So the, the sand side is done, let's do the water line and I will go in first with the this sort of green color. I just do on sort of like one side and when you do this, kind of blend it in with your sand color on this side too. So. Pretty nice color, isn't it? Now we're gonna go in with your kind of blue purple, purple blue, and I'll just yes go over the green a little bit as well and pretty much cover it. I can Very easy to rub in. You don't need to use lots of pressure. Okay. Now you have that's uh, that blue down. Now you're gonna go in with the darkest blue that you have in your set. 
or like the next second dot if you don't want to do that and I just rub it in again make it darker now this side I like it when the blue cover that because it will give you impressions that some of the shell was under the water so I really like that kind of effect So we pretty much halfway done already. Even with it just like this, it will still look quite nice if you don't want to draw anything in. But let's do some white light. So I'm gonna turn this over like that so I can um, make it easier for me. So zoom it in so you can see. So for the white light, um, it is actually very simple, but if it's make it easier for you, you can use reference. So, if you look at this picture, the white, there's a white white lines that we're gonna draw. So you look at them, they are randomly lines that connect to each other. Okay, so you can see, it's a light from the sun on top and a shy tree. So we're gonna do very similar to that. So let's start it. You have your white shell pen. I will use a Uniball Signal Pro white shell pen because I really like this one. It's quite opaque. Okay. So I think with this one, I will do the lights on top of the shells because it's supposed to be on top of the object. It will make the impressions of this side of the shell is underneath the water and this side uh, when it's on the sand okay so what I do I will draw a line I don't, don't do um, like straight line but I sort of just eyeball it where the you know the sand and the water line meet I'm gonna just do one line cover it like so it's kind of hard to see because it's why isn't it so now i have that light i can s slowly build up so let's do this area here okay so we have the the white light here so i'm gonna do another light and i connect it with the various light that we already have so we're just gonna do random light like so and we're gonna just connect them let's do another line go through like so okay and you're just gonna connect the random line in the between and connect them like that you can do quite a big spy do small you can do little like so and for this way here, I will do a lot of connect line because that's where the bubble is. The ways you kind of connect there. Okay. Just do a few. It look quite odd now, but later we will thicken it up and it will look nicer. This one, we are just gonna put down lines and stuff just to see how you like it. And this is easy method because if you don't like where you put the light, you can wait until it dry. And you can use your nail to rub out your white light and you can start again. Okay? So you see how I do a lot of little connect lights where the water meet, meet the, uh, the sand. Okay? 
And even with just like that, when you do the whole thing, it will look quite nice too. So don't worry, just do random line, you will be fine. Now I'm gonna zoom it in for you so see what I'm gonna do next. So next we're gonna refine them and just make sure them dry before you come in because you might smudge it with your hand. So let's do this bit here. I'm gonna darken up you know the some some of them, some of the light, light so where they meet. I just darken it up. You can do randomly. These are pretty much just randomly anyway. So you can do a few that is thick. And a few of them is thin line. Okay. So these are gonna do quite thick like so. So see as, as soon as it's get a bit, you refine them and it's get a bit thicker, it will look very different from what you start off with. It's best when you do on the side first, so you don't smudge it as you go down. But I just still want to do it in the middle for you so you can see better. So let's do this side. Every once in a while, just you know, stop and have a look at what you're doing to see if you do too much, if you're adding too much, or you know, if you stop and you look at it to see if you need to fix anything. Uh, is it too much lies here, too much purple here, or sort of thing like that? Hold me. Close. 
close till I get up Time is barely on our side I don't wanna waste what's left The storms we chase are leading us And love is all we love Okay, now we have all the white slide done I zoom it out so you can see So it looks more like a sea now, isn't it? But it still looks quite flat it's because we only have a flat wash underneath where at the sea is when when it shine through and it's have white like this because of all the purple form it will have the shadow underneath so that's what we're gonna do um, first we're gonna do around the shell first so if you have the polychromo then you use the polychromo if you have the prismacolor then you use Prismacolor. They both work quite well with this technique, but I prefer the Polychroma more. So I will use a Petal Blue first. Okay, this is a Petal Blue. And I will go around the shell. Okay, I'll go around the shell. With light pressure, you don't need to press it very hard. Okay. You're gonna do all the all the shadow for the seashell. Okay, so you're just gonna go around the seashells and blend it out a little bit. Blend it out. Like so. Make sure you don't go over the, the white so you don't scratch it off. So it's still with the same pencil that you are using. You would go in with the medium pressure now and you just darken it up a little bit. Okay, so like so. If you can see, so you see like how it's have a little bit more shadow now. So we do you do all of for all of the the shells. You go quite light first. The easiest way is you follow the shape of the shell because seeing um, the lines I do on this side, so I'm gonna just do all the shadow on this side. Trust, yeah. No, I don't wanna waste what's left. We'll go through the wastelands, through the highways, till my shadow turns to sun rays. And on and on, we'll go through the wastelands, through the highways. And on
so now I already done all the shadow for the sh uh, shells itself. So we go in with the light petal blue. So I'm gonna add in a few area. You're gonna pick out where you're gonna add, add in the shadow for these uh, waves. You don't need a lot of these, this color. I'm just gonna mark the way I'm gonna put it. Okay. I'll put in a few here and there. It's sort of like randomly. Okay. Now I'm gonna go in with the uh, in the train blue in the train. Uh, I don't really know how to say that one, but it's this one. And you're just gonna darken up the shadow for the waist, I say. It's about here. So I'm gonna darken it up. Yes, I go over the uh, the shell, but it's, it doesn't matter because the shell is underneath these waves. Okay. It's you don't have to do it for all of them, just a few. Just make sure it's have the shadow, so. shadow down you can see it look a lot nicer isn't it um, now I will go in a little bit with the light petal blue and I will just blush this color in here and there because sometimes in the water you can see a little bit of green and it just make your your C look more dimensions and just not blue uh, when you look at the blue C is still have a tin of green because of you know the um, what's that called seaweed no I forgot what it's called now yeah I think it's a seaweed because of the sun when it's shy and it make the the sea is a little bit like green This is a nice green, not like a dirty green. Okay, so you can put in a little bit. It's a very nice green. Okay, so I done with the seaside. Um, now you can add in a little bit of purple or a dot or anything you like. I add a lot of purple on the side here. So now we already done the white side. I will do the sand side. So I, as you can see, I already add uh, shadows and uh, sand texture for uh, most of the shell. But I will show you. I will leave. I left a few, so I can show you now how I do uh, this one. I will use polychroma again. I will use navy yellow and peach red color. But if you don't have polychroma, you can use uh, prisma color and you. Can get these two colors out it's a 940 and 941 color so um, it's a sand and I think it's, it's a light amber so you can get like pretty similar effect so what you do because of the light go through this side so 
we do pretty much the same with the shadow of the shell under the sea, right? So we just go get your neighbor yellow, your neighbor yellow first, and you just add in a light layer. We do the shadow quite big because if if you do a like a small shadow, like the shading, a very close to the shell, it will make the your object look flat. Where if you do this, it will make your object look like it's is a taller object. My heart rages around like an ocean in my head because there are. So now that you have your body style. Now you go in with the pastel color, and you you will add in, uh, but quite close to your shell this color, just to darken it up and make it look like the shell is even higher, even taller. So many things that I left unsaid. Now you are done with the shadow. I'll use a Stettler fine liner. I use one of the Stettler fine liner from um, the Stettler company, and I pick a kind of brown color, and I just do you know like a sandy texture. I just dot 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 dot, and quite a lot near the shells, and just bring it out. Um, just make it a bit less as you go out. You don't need to cover the whole page. You just do a few. And you are pretty much done. And we are done. So now you can add in the shiny for the shells if you want to, but I, I won't. I, I don't have to add the needle. So this is our result and you can see it's very very nice. I will later I will spray the page with fixative so the soft pastel won't come off to another page. And I have a great time today with you guys. I hope you do as well. And I will see you very soon in another tutorial. Happy coloring! Bye!